Okay, guys. <laughs> Shane asked if there's a formula for this kind of kick. Okay, cue ball, eight ball. Let's just say we got some blocker balls there and we can't see the eight. Okay, um, so we got a long distance between the two balls, the cue ball and the object ball, and neither of them are in pockets. They're both offset onto different places in the rail. So this does actually make it a little more difficult. However, I'll show you two easy little hacks that'll take two seconds to figure this out, okay? Number one, the mere 50, mere 50, all right? We know that from the corner to the back of this pocket takes us here, okay? So right here is going to be our 50% spot. If we mirror that eight ball onto this rail, I'm gonna use a marker just for now for the demonstration, okay? Here's our marker. If we mirror the eight ball on the other rail, and we take that line to the 50% mark here, right here, okay? That's why we're gonna call it the mirror 50. And now we just shift halfway to the cue ball. This becomes our aim spot now, okay? With no English. Here we go. Oh, we missed it, but we hit it. Another easy way, takes less than 10 seconds, is to use the two rail kicking system. Because the object ball is pretty much on the rail, the two rail kicking system will work to try to kick it in the corner. Okay, so draw a line between the eight ball and the cue ball. That 50% mark right in the middle of them, which is about right here, is your 50% mark, okay? See that? Now I'm gonna take that line, I'm gonna point to the passing pocket, okay? Right there, now I'm gonna parallel shift all the way over to the cue ball. Okay, bang, we see our spot. I'm gonna play just a little bit of right English because I wanna hit the rail first so I can make that eight ball in the corner. Ah, we just missed it, but we made contact. All right, so stay tuned and I'll explain the long version a little bit more about how these work. Okay, so we know that the line from the back of the corner pocket to the back of the side pocket will deliver the cue ball here, okay? At a medium to soft face with no spin, no stun, no sliding cue ball, all right, and we should make it to that corner all day long. So, how do we figure this out with that measurement? Okay, first of all, we can take that line right here and we can shift halfway to the cue ball. Okay, so technically if I aimed for here, it should, from this cue ball position, it should deliver us to that corner pocket. <laughs> However, I can't because that's the horn of the pocket. All right, so. But that's not where we need to go anyway. We need to go over more to make the eight. So now I look, my corner spot is here, but I don't need to aim here to make it to the corner. I have to see how far I have to shift out halfway to the eight ball, 50%, right there. So about a half a diamond. I have to adjust about at least a half a diamond, okay? So I'm gonna go about this far. So my aim point now, is going to be about here, okay? And that's how you mathematically and geometry-wise, you figure out the angles for this shot, okay? So now I'm just gonna aim where I figured out. Okay, and again, we made good contact. You can adjust to try to make the ball. I'm just trying to make contact in this example. The first example that I showed, the mere 50. Why does that work? Well, it's because I'm mirroring the eight ball, all right? Basically, it's at this diamond. That's just in front of that diamond. It is a mirror now. Now, all I need to do is divide the table in 50%, okay? Mirror 50, that's what I call it, all right? So we know that our 50% line is from here to here, to the back of the pocket, right? So I take uh, that line from here, to the back of the pocket because this is 50% of this whole rail, 50%. That's all I have to do. So I take the line to my mirror uh, image of the eight ball, okay? And now, because this side is always twice as far as that side, or sorry, this side is twice as far as this side for the angle, I just go 50% of the way to the cue ball. Keep everything in line, okay? Right there is our spot. So now I can just parallel shift the butt over top of the cue ball, and that is the aim line. 
Now, if I want to try to make this, I might want to play just a little bit of running English. Ah, uh, close again. Okay, the ball's out of the pocket. You're not going to make it all the time. <laughs> the key is to get a good hit on it, though. All right, why does the two-rail measurement work for a single-rail kick? <laughs> well, it's because it's on the rail or just off of the rail, okay? Um, so, yes, like I explained here, the distance between the cue ball and the eight ball, you you just manu visually vis visualize 50% of that distance. And on the line, not over here somewhere, right here on the line in between them, 50% right in the middle between them. And then you use that spot and the passing pocket, okay? This is really the passing pocket for the two rail kick. If, you, if the cue ball was up here somewhere, it would be the same. You would take the distance between the cue ball and the and the and the object ball, 50%. Point to the passing pocket, because this is the passing pocket here, from the angle that we're using, to go like this. Okay, passing pocket. All right, mirroring mirroring pocket. We're going for here. This is the mirroring pocket, yeah. or passing pocket, whatever. So, um, yes, the two rail kick. Uh, basically, it should hit right before the rail. <laughs> okay. And I like to put a little bit of running English on that. So let's do this again, just to, so you guys get it, okay? 50%, point to passing pocket, mirroring pocket, lift up, keep everything in line, shift 100% to the cue ball, all the way to the cue ball, not 50%, because this is a two rail kick. Okay, I can see my aim. It's the same as uh, our other measurements, pretty much. But if we just play a little bit of running English, we should be able to get it. We're very close. There we go, finally. 